Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, th thank you both. I greatly appreciate uh, your, your explanations, your descriptions. Uh, this is very helpful, not only just for the American people, who, but for all of us in Congress who are taking a look at, at what do we do next and, and how do we approach this, what other hearings are, are necessary. And in looking at your, your written testimonies, um, <clears throat> Mr. Nalo, you say that um, uh, using its non-insurance operations, AIG, just like many other financial services institutions, invested heavily in subprime mortgages. And then, Mr. Turner, you say, and I love this paragraph in your written testimony, um, you say you're talking about mark to market. And I, that comes into play because of the issue of subprime mortgages and the securitization of, of the, secure, um, the mortgage backed securities that, that were having to be mark to market. You see, I note the banks are requesting a moratorium on their fair value report card, but they are also requesting $700 billion of Americans' money to bail them out for the bad loans they made. And they want both. And you go on to say it's a red herring, that obviously if it was just mark to market, um, they wouldn't need both the shift on mark to market and, and the cash. And then you conclude um, here, um, ultimately, it's no different than someone who spends more than their paychecks each month, indicating that the bank spent more on assets bought or created than they are subsequently getting paid back. And that brings us back to the subprime mortgages. And that's why I think it is so important that we have additional hearings on Fannie and Freddie and the subprime uh, mortgage area. And I've got a question about that for you. And I, I want to tell you what the experience is in my community. Uh, yesterday, when we had our um, hearing on Lehman Brothers, uh, we had a panel that spoke beforehand. And they said that this all comes from a period of easy credit, housing prices escalating and then declining, securitization of mortgages, people using their houses as ATMs, and uh, of course, excessive CEO compensation was, was cited. In my community, subprime mortgage lending, predatory lending, has had a decimating impact on neighborhoods, families. So we're at the forefront of the foreclosure crisis. In 2001, our community held a hearing on predatory lending. Uh, City Commissioner Dean Lovelace uh, pushed for this. There was legislation uh, passed to try to deal with it that was ultimately um, knocked down. But the um, the community experiences about 5,000 foreclosures a year, Ohio about 80,000 a year. Um, every three years, that's the size of an entire congressional district that we, that we see uh, being foreclosed. But the experience we found in those hearings and what's happening in Ohio is that many times these are loans where the, or the loan origination amount exceeded the value of the property. It's not mortgage values declining, although they are now, which is compounding the problem, but that there was systematic efforts to give people loans that were in excess of the value of their homes, many times capitalizing the fees, many times giving them terms that either had escalating uh, in rates or, or payments that got them into difficulty, and then also economic conditions causing them not being able to keep up, up with payments. Then having a house that has a greater mortgage than the value would result in abandonment and, and foreclosure. Um, Many of the things that we hear about in this, uh, what we should do and, and what has happened, fall in the category of you know, bad business judgments or areas of regulation. But to me, loaning people val a loan in greater than the value and then securitizing that and not disclosing that, the loan, that there's a gap between the loan value and the, the value of the underlying asset should be if it's not a crime, and I believe that it is. And I think ultimately when we start looking at all these things, we're going to find that, that there were real crimes committed here that real people stole, and that had a big impact on our economy. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on the subprime mortgage crisis that has brought this about? What are some of the things that we should be looking at, practices like this, that might lead us to uh, how do we stop these practices? Because in the bailout, Congress did not stop the practices that got us here. I <clears throat> I would amend one of my earlier answers. I was asked what are the things that I would have the Financial Services Committee look at working with you, and I said CDSs, and I said Graham Leach Bliley. Uh, the third would be that there is only so much good risk in any community. And we have permitted through securitization underwriters to basically do a set of loans to their community and then re-up the tank for doing more loans an endless amount of times. So the first set of loans that were CDO, the first set of mortgages performed very well, and that banker probably said, you know, I, there's, a, a, there's at least twice as many loans that I would have made because I got great people in my community. I want them to own homes, but I had to make some tough decisions. And a banker on Wall Street securitized it, and the second set did really well, and those were made 
with proper underwriting due diligence decisions. After the sixth or seventh or eighth iteration for however we got there, I think that there is a basic fundamental issue with people not owning the underwriting risk of their decisions. They have to have exposure to their underwriting risk. And if you put into place a system where they no longer have to worry about whether they get paid back on their loans because they've handed it off to Wall Street, who's handed it off to investors seven, eight times, um, you will, th we will repeat this again. Mr. Uh, I'd, I'd agree with uh, Eric on this one. The disintermediation that the banking regulators allowed to happen to where whoever was lending the money no longer had any skin in the game uh, and you got paid handsomely for doing those type of deals uh, is a major contributing factor here and I think you got to go back and look at the regulation of uh, uh, the mortgage uh, brokers. Uh, certainly the appraisal process uh, is going to be part of that but I think people have to go back and, and say as a matter of public policy we all love securitization because it gave everyone a chance to get into a home and no one was complaining about it when we gave everyone the chance to get into a home but when we loaned up a hundred percent on those values and there were a lot of those home I think there's something like 55 million of these of which 10 or 12 to 13 million are now in foreclosure uh, clearly something wasn't working out about them and someone needs to go back to the banking regulators and, and they've done some work on this but people need to make sure that they've done enough work to make sure those type of loans can't be made and then the bigger question of the role of securitizations which quite frankly Fannie and Freddie play a big role in here uh, ha have we got to re-examine that policy and say if there's securitizations do we have enough safeguards the underwriting that occurred on them was uh, and due diligence by the investment bankers was atrocious and that played a role as well thank you mr. chairman I just want to make the additional point that most of the ones uh, the loans that went into default in my community were actually refinances where the, the family had the American dream but that someone went back and sold them then a product uh, that, that they could not maintain. Thank